Let us view this important matter a little more clearly, a little more closely, in order to understand exactly where it must leave us. Comets appear to approach the Sun in one of these three curves. A, an ellipse. B, a parabola. C, a hyperbola. An ellipse is an oblong ob orbit which is closed up of the shape of an egg or of an extended variation of an egg. A parabola is an enlarged or elongated ellipse but unclosed, oh yeah that is the word, unclosed at its far distance. An hyperbola is a slight curve or arc which begins at one end and disappears at the other, giving no indication of any defined orbit. In each case the sun forms the apex of the movement. In regard to these curves indicating the approach and retreat of a comet to and from perihelion contact, it must be recollected that the sun himself, interesting that he assigns the sun to a gender, but anyway, the sun himself is not a stationary star in the universe and some state his movement is at the rate of 133 million miles annually, which, if it be the case, means that the planets, apart from their orbital movement around the Sun, are at the same time accompanying their central orb through space at the same stupendous rate. There are grounds for disputing the accuracy of this astronomical estimate, but at all events an approaching comet which would otherwise follow a straight and direct path if the Sun were stationary must adopt an apparent ellipse, parabola or hyperbola according to the angle and direction from which it comes. If it be, say, a parabola, it is carried by its momentum after perihelion, and if an hyperbola, it continues for a, a time. Then observe what follows its brush or contact with the sun at a distance relatively great or small. Vitiates the celestial body, as observations confirm, but, and its residue carried onward becomes an emasculated edition of what it was before perihelion contact. In a given time and space, the law of gravity will check the onward motion and bring the body round to an ellipse. If it survives a second or even a third perihelion embrace, it stands to reason that each time as its mass is weakened, it completes a smaller circuit proportionate to its existing weight. Thus, it permits the allegation that there is no real orbit of any comet for those that adopt an ellipse are merely survivors in a temporary capacity of a body which may originally have appeared as a parabola or as a hyperbola and has gradually shortened to an elliptical momentum in obeying the law of gravity until it comes at length to in its to its inexorable end as a feeder of the sun. Such a contention, which is in strict accordance with the law of gravity, further compels compels the conclusion that no comet once drawn into the radius of solar influence can whisk off indefinitely into space, thus defying all laws of gravity, but within a comparatively short space of time rarely exceeding seven to eight years from the first perihelion contact is drawn in and is devoured by the sun at great circuit at each circuit rapidly shortening the apparent orbit. A comet could possibly sustain an orbit extending to hundreds to say nothing of th could what is this? If oh if a po sorry if a comet could possibly sustain an orbit extending to hundreds to say nothing of thousands of years, there would require to be two or three foci of attraction, each of which would exact toll as the emaciated body, defying every known law of the heavens, continued indefinitely its rampaging career. It would traverse other solar systems, and despite the obvious absorption of its mass Hang on. it would pursue an unfailing path. Mr. C. L. Poor, a leading geometrician, 
has pointed out that in any case a parabolic orbit is an impossibility to say nothing of a hyperbolic because attracted by Jupiter or some other planet or let us rather say Sun its speed must be increased or decreased whilst a parabolic body cannot vary its rate of movement or it ceases to be a parabola yet to explain this very odd orbit astronomers have adduced a theory in which a comet passing around the Sun then recedes and becomes more abound in space until Jupiter or some other planet lures it on by becoming a new center of attraction although signally enough signally enough the planet does not appear to s suffer pretty sure that should be another word uh, signally enough I think that should be significantly enough I don't know wouldn't be the first grammar mistake in this book let's face it what has been said of a parabolic orbit appeals equally to an hyperbola for, as in the case of a parabola, the solar attraction acting on its weight checks its momentum and brings it back in the path of an ellipse, whence it undergoes in due course another perihelion passage until finally it is drawn into the fires of our great luminary. During any of these circuits, if the Earth or another planet obstructs its path, it will and must strike it in full or in part. There is little doubt but that the Babylonians, Phoenicians and early Druids of Britain among the ancient races of mankind were well aware of these principles. They afford the true explanation of many engraved volcanic stones found mainly in Scotland, though also in Ireland and the Isle of Man, and as depicted on ancient coins of Macedonia, Corinth and Britain of spiral celestial forms almost invariably represented in three spiral circles or ellipses. They commonly enter at a point and complete these circles to a centre. Usually these spirals, also called quote, cup marks by archaeologists can, who can make nothing of them, are placed in conjunction with symbols of the constellations, often Pegasus or Capricornicus, sometimes with Pisces, or in a particular instance with the unlucky sign of Cetus, the sea monster. Sometimes, as in figures D and E of the accompanying illustrations, the symbol is doubled and seems then to depict the coming of twin comets in the heavens. Professor L. A. Waddell attributes them to so primitive an idea as the sun rising and sinking, despite the enormous reputation of the Druids enjoined among the Romans for their great knowledge of astronomy. Nevertheless, the symbol was widespread. The spirals also, which are found on British coins, on Bronze Age work, and on prehistoric monuments and rocks in Britain, are usually in series of twos, are clearly found on Sumerian, Hittite and Phoenician seals, and as a decorative device on vases, etc. In old Phoenician settlements in Cyprus and Crete and along the Mediterranean, yet the meaning of the spiral does not seem to have been hitherto elicited. It is now seen by our new evidence to represent the dual phases of the sun of the Sumerians. The right-handed or westward moving spiral represented the day sun and the left-handed or eastward moving spiral represented the quote returning sun at night. Phoenician Origins of Britons and Scots, page 287. The contradiction to such an assertion is seen on most of the coins themselves, where the sun is shown as a separate entity altogether in the sign Pegasus. Archaeologists invariably possess a complex for the sun in everything to do with the ancients' faith, whereas the sun, in fact, placed only a secondary part in their philosophy. To return to this question of orbits, it is commonly taught and believed that the so-called quote periodic comets such as Halley's, Encke's and formerly Biela's prove that comets do possess orbits which can be correctly calculated. How do the astronomers, when they see a comet in the sky, know if it is Halley's or Biela's or any other comet, pre any other previous comet to which they have given a name? The answer is, they do not. 
they expect a comet at such and such a time and the first body that appears somewhere about the time they have calculated upon and near enough to answer the general direction they are searching for is hailed with joy as a further proof of the genius of the great celestial scientists. And yet we must fain admit that the presence of a comet or comets in the heavens is no unusual event. Observers are generally only able to distinguish those comparatively close to our Earth unless they are exceptionally fiery or else are seen in or near perihelion contact. It might be added that far more comets enter the solar system than are observed by astronomers and recognised as such, some even being tabulated as new stars, others as minor planets, others as asteroids.